All right. Okay, thanks for the introduction. So I'll be talking about a study on attentional modulation of multi-unit activity in the LGN and V1 of macaque monkeys. So since my project involves studying attention, I just want to briefly describe or define what we mean by attention in the context of this uh, project and how we operationalize this definition to study attention. So most of you might be familiar with this um, famous video about uh, about viewers being asked to count the number of times the basketball was passed between these players wearing white. And most people were able to guess this correctly, but most of the same people also failed to notice that a person in a gorilla suit walked across the screen and spent almost nine seconds on the video. So one way to think about attention is that it enhances the detection of behaviorally relevant targets at the cost of um, ignoring the distractor, which is like the gorilla over here. And often this has been helpful to increase accuracy in detection, discrimination, and search. And this has been shown across all sensory modalities. But um, a lot of the previous work has been focused on visual attention, just because we have a very deep understanding of the structure and function of visual structures. So attention effects have been found all over the visual brain, including in the early steps, which include the LGN or lateral geniculate nucleus, which is the first synapse after the retina, as well as primary visual cortex V1. And usually these effects increase in size along the visual hierarchy. In addition to that, effect sizes also vary within the same structure. So effect sizes within the same structure vary with different neuronal classes, vary with task difficulty, where attention facilitation is higher with increasing task difficulty, also varies depending on the task relevance of the neuronal responses, and in, surprisingly also varies with measurement. So this is a different based on what measurement has been used to capture the neuronal activity. This is especially true in area V1. So on the left, you see a plot of attention modulation index versus number of neurons. And as you can see, the peak of this plot is at zero. And this has been suggested to show that most neurons in V1 show no attention modulation. And hence V1 is probably not involved in spatial attention. However, using fMRI, many of the studies have shown much larger effect sizes, and the effect sizes are almost 20% larger than what we see in single V1 neurons. Um, this is also seen in LGN, where effect sizes vary vastly across studies using different measurements. And so for this study, we decided to explore this further using an intermediate measure between single unit and fMRI, which is the multi-unit. And the question we pose is whether attentional effects measured with multi-unit activity are equivalent to single unit attentional modulation effects. So in order to study this, we had monkeys performing an attention task, uh, which is a contrast change attention task. And to briefly explain this task, the monkey has to fixate at the central fixation dot and the color of the fixation dot um, cues the monkey where he, should, he or she should attend. So in this case, the, the red color uh, indicates that the monkey should attend at the lower drifting grating which also overlaps with the receptor field of the attended location. And thanks to Taurus, everyone now knows what a receptor field is. And in the attend away trials, the monkey has to attend away from the receptor field, um, which is the upper drifting grating. And at the end of the stimulus display period, the contrast will change of the cued location and the monkey has to report that um, contrast change. But we want to ensure that the monkeys really understand this task and are paying attention to the cued location. And so we also include certain invalid trials where the contrast changes at the invalid uh, location. And we would expect that the performance should drop. And so that's indeed what we find for all three monkeys where um, solid lines is the individual session performance and dotted lines is the mean accuracy. And we see that all three monkeys generally perform much better in the valid attention toward and attention away trials versus invalid. And once we have a proof of concept of our behavior, I just wanna briefly draw your attention uh, to this trial structure and mainly this gray bar, which is the last one second before contrast change. And that's the time period I used for an analyzing all the recording on neuronal data, which really ensures that the visual stimulation is the exact same on, the, on each trial and we can now compare for different attentional effects. Um, so to collect this data, we recorded from LGN and V1 while monkeys performed this task using single or multi-channel electrodes and obtained the raw voltage signal and did some filtering processes and obtained this high frequency wideband signal. And because we really want to thoroughly test whether attention modulation of multi-unit is similar or different to single units, we chose to um, threshold using three different values and sort our multi-units in three different ways shown here by three different colors. 
For example, for an example unit from monkey O, for each recorded unit, now we have three different multi units as low, medium, and high. And as one would expect, the number of spikes reduces with the increasing threshold, but the visual dynamics and the attentional modulation are qualitatively consistent across these um, different multi units. And we further do, subdivided or classified the data from V1 into different layers, namely the supragranular, granular, and infragranular. And so once we have all this data processed and classified, uh, I'm now combining data across monkeys, sessions, and different recording contacts. And this is data from the medium threshold, where on average, the threshold was two standard deviations away from the mean of the wideband signal. And in red is the neuronal response from attend toward, and in blue is the neuronal response from attend away. So we can see that in LGN, both the curves are pretty much uh, on top of each other, and we don't see any differences. And there are error parts in this plot, but it's pretty hard to see. Um, and in SG, G, and IG in V1, we see that the red curve overrides the blue curve. And we see similar patterns of modulation in both the low and high threshold conditions. So to further quantify the differences between the attend to and attend away condition, we use an attention index measure, which is mainly the difference over the sum of average firing rate in attend to versus attend away trials. So in this example, PSTH, uh, we compute the difference between this red curve and the blue curve across the entire time period. And this gives us an AF 0.33. And because this is a bounded index, positive values means attentional facilitation and negative values means attentional suppression. So uh, we compute this AI for all multi-units and combine across different structures and different thresholds. And over here, I'm showing histogram plots plotted um, with attention index on the x-axis and number of multi-units on the y-axis. So in general, we see that the distributions become broader with increasing threshold as the variance increases. But um, these dashed lines, which are the mean AIs for each condition, also shown in the table on the right, are pretty consistent across thresholds for each structure. So in LGN, we see that the mean AI is very small and close to zero and not statistically different from zero. Whereas for SGG and IG, for low and medium threshold, we see that the uh, line has shifted to the right and is significantly different from zero. Hence, these regions are uh, on average facilitated by tension. And we don't see that for SG and G in high threshold, but uh, the main takeaway here is that these effect sizes are much larger than what we would expect from single units. These are almost tenfold uh, more than reported effect sizes in um, single V1 neurons. So to further um, go into this data, we also looked at um, dynamics of the responses. And for this, I am plotting this data using confidence interval ranges. Um, and these individual lines represent the range of the mean AI for each structure. And once again, um, because we know that attention is a dynamic process and shows fluctuations around 200 to 300 milliseconds, this is, uh, we decided to break the one second window into three smaller periods, which allows us to capture any dynamics if they are present in the multi-unit data. And we see that for low and medium threshold, uh, the effects are pretty consistent across time for each structure. And this is very similar to what we saw in the previous slide, even though the uh, data format was different. And for the high threshold, we see some interesting dynamics that emerge, especially in the beginning uh, time period where we see that the G and IG are robustly facilitated by attention. And this was interesting to see because this uh, reflects the local circuitry that we know from V1, where G and IG both receive input from LGN and are strongly interconnected. And it's consistent with what we know about attention effects within LGN and V1, where um, attention enhances the synaptic efficacy between LGN and V1 and also V1 local circuits. And also the fact that um, IG sends back feedback to LGN and attention enhances um, that feedback as well. So the main takeaway here is that effects are pretty consistent across thresholds and time. Even though we start seeing more dynamics and changes in the magnitude and high threshold, and interestingly, the effects that we see for high threshold, both in terms of magnitude and dynamics, are very similar to what we've seen for uh, single unit data from the exact uh, same data set. So um, to conclude the results, we mainly find differential attentional effects in LGN and V1, and these differences are pretty consistent across different multi-unit thresholds and across time periods and mainly that we see attentional facilitation in V1, which is much larger than effect sizes using single V1 neurons. And it's actually interestingly more comparable to fMRI effect sizes. 
So this was really a simple exercise to point out that these effect sizes can really depend on what measurement we use and are not really illustrative of how a particular region is involved in attention. So the main takeaways are what I would call cautionary tale from this simple exercise of analyzing this data and comparing, making these comparisons is that attention effect sizes do depend on measurement. And often many studies combine multi-unit and single unit um, recordings to study attention, but that may not be appropriate depending on where we are recording from. And just the lack of effect size may not be indicative of the lack of a region's involvement in attention. So we must focus on more mechanistic accounts of attention and move beyond effect si just reporting mean effect sizes. And um, one candidate hypothesis that we propose for the differences that we see in LGN and V1 um, relies on the way multi-unit captures activity across neurons. So we know that multi-unit captures activity around 200 muem around the recording contact. Um, this is just an illustration of what that would look like uh, with three different uh, neuron types. And so basically multi-units are pooling signals embedded in the functional architecture. And we also know that LGN and V1 are both locally heterogeneous, but also have very distinct functional architectures. But the main organizing principle in LGN is the layered structure, whereas in V1 it's the columnar structure. So that could explain one reason why we see these differences in effects and which are hugely inconsistent across what we know from previous work. Um, so basically when we uh, are talking about attentional modulation of population activity, we should think about that in the context of the underlying functional architecture. And with that, I would like to thank my lab and especially the previous members who collected this data. And thank you for attention and I will take any comments and questions. Okay, thanks, uh, Shreda, for the for the great talk about attention. Um, yeah, we're pretty tight on time, so oh, there's a question from the audience. Um, do you have LFP data from these areas, and how might that compare to multi unit uh, multi unit activity? Yeah, so uh, previous students have published on the LFP data for this um, same data set. And they find interesting dynamics based on what time period they're looking at and which are consistent with feed forward and feedback mechanisms. But on average, the amplitude of the effects is not as high. And I think that's the main point where just looking at the amplitude or magnitude of the effect uh, really varies with the measurement and doesn't really tell us much about what a region is doing in attention. Okay. But you can, you can um, find the paper. It has been published um, two years ago or a year ago. Thanks, um, hope that answered the question. We have not, another question. Uh, just uh, meanwhile, maybe Adil, you can try to share the set up the sharing. Just one quick question. How would you reconcile the MUA results with single neuron um, and the FMI results? Right, and I think, I think basically we have shown through other work that we can find these mechanistic details in the diversity of responses in V1 with single neuron. But I think the main takeaway is that instead of thinking of it as reconciling, maybe we need to think that the measurement is a reflection of several different factors, including the functional architecture. So I think really exactly how to measure attention or how to think of attention must be done across multiple different parameters and not just attention index. That could be one way to think about it. Like I think, I think one way to further explore this project would be to test out a few different analyses with the multi-unit activity and see like how it affects the um, variability or phenol factor or like synaptic efficacy between the two regions. And that could provide a better insight into how consistent these two measures are when we see more holistically with um, the many different ways we think about attention. Okay, uh, thanks Shreda. Uh, given the